Okay, ladies and gents, we live. Welcome to a simple rundown of the current patch notes for Dark Tide. Many of you know that Dark Tide has launched today. Tonight it has launched. And there is a patch at launch that you guys might want to know about. So today is the first official day of launch. And in terms of stability, I can confirm this. I already checked it. A lot of the crash issues have been fixed. If your crash issues have not been fixed, let me know. I will not only feed it back to the devs, but I'll also give you guys a solution in a separate video. All right, because this solution was brought to my attention by another partner. And honest to God, it has worked well for me. So let me know if you guys are still crashing a lot. I will try and help you guys with that. Okay, um, in terms of matchmaking and network disconnects, there have been a lot of improvements being made. And hopefully there should be tighter matching levels and better class distribution. Honestly, God, it doesn't really matter, though. I'm just happy to have more people to play with because there were 25,000 people logging in. So, so hopefully Oceania region is going to be real populated. OK, gameplay updates and balancing. They've adjusted the final balance mix for launch, and they wanted to give players a clearer sense of how to interact in combat. What does this mean? Basically, there is now a dodge window. You cannot spam dodge anymore. You will have to dodge, pause for one second and dodge again. However, you can still dodge repeatedly all right just that there's a slight delay in between the the number of dodges you cannot uh spam chain dodge okay so that is something that i wanted to highlight to you it was a movement technique that some of us used on the psyker when quelling um but now we are no longer able to do that now we should now we have to dodge pause dodge pause dodge um so it might create some differences in combat movement especially for the psyker please be aware of this um when you are hit while having toughness depleted, players will now get stunned. All right. There's always been a stun immunity window that allows action before you are able to get stunned again. But other hit effects have hidden it. They have cleaned up and paused many of the secondary hit effects to more clearly interface when you can act and not sabotage player actions in these precious frames of defiance. All right. They've also increased the action windows a bit to allow for a broader range of actions as some weapons are relatively slow. Um, after a few tweaks during the beta, the toughness loop is now more granular and less, and there's less jumping from min to max all the time, which makes a good foundation for an interesting defensive loop and build choices. Um, if there are any issues, don't forget to keep reporting them. And basically, the intent behind this was to create a loop where players use talents, abilities, coherency, and traits to regain the full safety of toughness while gaining reduced damage along the way. Okay. In terms of the update summary, now this is going to be a long one, but I'm going to try and make it fast for you guys. All right. Um, there are several known issues. You can you can read about them yourself, but I'm just going to give you the key ones. Number one, sudden crash to the desktop um, with the dialogue pop-up is often known as GPU hang. They know about this. Please keep reporting them every time they happen. They are working on delivering some missing Twitch drops for a select few players. And there's been an inability to merge strike teams. They will try and remedy that. All right, these are the most major ones. Um, okay, new features. Now, this is the awesomest part. There are three. One, two, three. Three new zones. Sorry, I thought that was four for some reason, so I had to count. There are three new zones. The first is called Enclavum Baros and a new throne side mission. All right. Um, enemy forces in Enclavum Baros have made sudden and unexpected advances into throne side. They must be driven out of the zone. However, it seems they have overextended their assault and have not yet had time to properly consolidate their position. It is a priority to cut off their supply lines and access routes before they're fully established. Any enemy forces remaining in Throneside can then be isolated and eliminated without the risk that they will be reinforced and supported. Okay, two more missions in Freightport HL-322. The Hourglass, all right. Refinery Delta-17. Um, turns out that one of the hourglass fuel refineries is being used to culture a pathogen, get access to said refinery via the flow control, and build overpressure in the gestation chambers to destroy it. Okay, the bad news is that it's all enemy territory, so it might get a little sticky, but we can handle that. We're, we're badass. Excise Vault Spireside 13. The heretics are using one of the old excise vaults to store samples of their latest contagion. An interrogator Rannick wants one for study. To get into the vault, you'll need a cipher indent, and for that, you'll need to brute force access to a servitor colony. You can use the old pneumatic conveyor to get the samples out. Then you can find your own exit. Alright. 
Um, the Commodore's Ventures are now open for business. What is this? Premium skins that you can buy. I'll do a separate video on this. I hope you guys check that out because I've already bought the skins. I am so ready for them. Okay, so you can trade Aquilas for fashionable items curated by the Morning Stars Pursuer, Alice Hallowett. Cosmetics only. Once purchased, the items are unlocked for all characters on your account that can use them. Okay, so once you unlock a cosmetic, it's unlocked for all characters that can use them. If you've got two psychers, both psychers can use the same cosmetic set. I will demonstrate this uh, when I make my psyker guide, uh, beginner psyker video uh, at another time. Okay, um... Windows, PC, and Steam. All right, this is patch 1.0.10. Uh, the Microsoft Windows version of Dark Tide only goes up to patch 1.0.10, okay? But Steam has an additional patch later on. Now, these are long, so I'm really not going to waste your time by going through all of them. But what I am going to say, and I'm just going to keep this real simple, is that there are cosmetic fixes... All right, for example, some of the Armory Exchange headpieces have hit the Augrin beard, stuff like that. Uh, these have been fixed. In turn, there have been audio fixes. Uh, for example, there was no sound when blocking whilst reviving. There was an issue where the audio would be missing on equipping the Maccabian Dueling Sword, so that's another thing. Um, in terms of the UI, they fixed an issue where the trait Fire Frenzy had an incomplete description. They fixed an issue where gamepad players were not informed on how to use the Auspex Scanner for that uh, one particular mission. All right, so remember all that. And in terms of animation, they fixed an issue where attacks would not animate correctly if performed immediately after being stunned. Um, the turtle ski heavy swords now have the correct attack direction on special attacks. There are several other issues, um, but one of the biggest one of the biggest things that I want to highlight, and this is great for all psychers. Okay. The four staff should now go back to the charge animation after using the Psyker ability, okay? Um, there have also been fixes and tweaks, and I'm going to focus specifically on the Psyker fixes and tweaks because I was so happy about them. Um, where is it? It was somewhere... Was it here? Oh, damn. It's not under... I think it's under balance, though. Okay, so there have been uh, some fixes and tweaks. You can check them out for yourself. Um, it was not here that the Psyker stuff was. So uh, let me just double check. There's been weapon balancing as well, uh, but these are mostly relevant to the guns, uh, especially the Lucius Hellbore last gun charge shots to now chain into zoomed bayonet attacks properly. Um, they fixed an issue where it was possible to dodge slide kite for an unintended amount of time with the Katakan Mark III combat blade. Um, adjustments were made to slowdowns and stuns on hit, all right? Adjustments were made to toughness bleed through. Um, these ones I suggest you take a look at yourself, but I'm going to read some of these for you. They reduced the slowdown on hit durations for light and medium stunning attacks. They increased the stun immunity durations when players suffer stunning hits. Um, they added immunity to look overrides, pushes, and, AD and aim down sight interrupts when in stun immunity. Um... They've slightly increased stun durations for light hits, and they set all dodge count reset timers to 0.85 for all weapons and classes, down from 1.0 on many but not all weapons. Uh, they removed the minimum bleed through of 10% damage regardless of toughness on melee hits. 100% toughness now blocks all damage. Now this is very important. Damage reduction based on toughness at the time of strike. So at 75 toughness, the damage is reduced by 75. So if you're at full toughness and you take a melee hit, you don't automatically get the 10% bleed through, okay? So the bleed through is based on your current toughness. Okay, um, stability and performance. Ah, okay, so sorry. It was in the Steam version only. So in the Steam version, there was the usual UI changes, animation changes. I suggest you read these yourselves because if I run them down, it's going to be a 15 minute video and you guys aren't going to really enjoy that. It's already close to 10 minutes right now. But coming down to, now players are going to be super happy with this. I think this is where uh, they talked about it. Yes, okay. Balance and weapons. Ta-da! Okay. The Psyker should no longer be forcibly switched to their melee weapon from Brain Burst. This happened really often. I know many of you first were frustrated. I was frustrated, so this makes me happy. Psykers can now cancel dueling sword attacks into a Brain Burst. Aha! So, that is one extra use of the dueling sword. Although, the force sword is basically way better. 
Um, the Psyker's Force Staff should now stop charging while quelling peril. So hopefully this helps a lot. I know some of you had this issue. Um, wait, there was more. There was more. Um, I don't know where it is. Hmm... Let me just search the Surge for staff. Oh, shit. Can I not find it on this page? Darn. Okay, so just so you know, uh, I saw it earlier and I can't pinpoint it because these notes are hella long. But um, the Surge for staffs, uh, you know how some of you had a problem shooting up and shooting down? Okay, the Surge for staff will now properly shoot up and down. Again, I don't know where it is here. It really should be somewhere in here. Um, so I do apologize for not being able to find it and highlighting it for you, but I did see it, um, come up as well. So, uh, that has also been changed and I hope it will help. Um, but yeah, most of the Psyker stuff I've already mentioned. So, oh, here it is. Here it is. Sorry. I forgot to mention this. There should be now more verticality when aiming with the surge force staff. So I hope that helps tremendously. I am super stoked to uh, go through all this. I suggest, again, that you read the patch notes for yourself. I will link you guys in the description of this video because there is a lot to cover. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys were excited. Look forward to my video explaining the shop as well and showing off all the sweet outfits in there, which I will be buying. My wallet, my wallet is crying, but I will be buying them. All right. Thank you guys very much. If you like this video, don't forget to get it to 100 likes. And um, thank you very much for supporting my Dark Tide content. More to come more to come. Keep an eye on my YouTube.